Hello everyone. Today let us do a problem based on influence line diagram. Let us read the question one time. Using muller bracelet principle, draw influence line diagrams for the bending moment at D, middle point of span AB of a continuous beam shown in the figure. Compute the ordinates at 1 meter interval. In this continuous beam, we have been asked to draw the ILD for bending moment at D in the middle of the span AB. Let us apply a hinge in the point D. Then let us apply unit moment in the point D. Then we have to separate this continuous beam into two parts. The first part is AD1 and the second part is D2C. For the part AD1, the unit moment acts in the clockwise direction. For the part D2C, the unit moment acts in the anticlockwise direction. Now let us take AD1 and find out the vertical reactions. In AD1, first I am going to calculate RA. For that, I am going to take moment about D1. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RA is acting towards the point D1 in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 2. So 2 RA. Then we have the unit moment. This moment is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. After the calculations, we are getting RA. For RA, we are getting a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that RA is acting upwards, but actually it is acting downwards. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and calculate RD1. RA is acting downwards, so it should be negative. When we take this negative value on the right side, it will be positive. In this way, we are getting RD1, which is acting upwards. We can calculate RD2 also. The values of RD1 and RD2 will be same, but they will be acting in the different directions. So the value of RD2 also will be 0.5, but it will be acting downwards. Now let us take the portion D2C and calculate the vertical reactions. We already calculated RD2 which is 0.5 and acting downwards. Let us calculate RB. For that I am going to take moment about C. First let us take the moment which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. RD2 is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction, so it is also negative. The distance between D2 and C is 8, so minus 0 0.5 into 8. RB is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 6, so 6 RB. Finally, we are getting RB which is equal to 5 upon 6. Using the rule sigma v is equal to 0, we can calculate rc. For rc, we will get a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that rc is acting upwards, but actually it is acting downwards. Now let's see the formula to calculate the moment in the point d, md. The formula is y dx upon theta dd. To calculate theta dd, the formula is theta dc minus theta da. To calculate y dx, we have to make sections in the beam. We have two parts, ad1 and d2c. First, let us take d2c and make sections and calculate y dx. 
in D2C there are two different parts D2B and BC. So we have to make two sections one section in BC and one section in D2B. We are making both of the sections from the point C. Both of the sections should be made at the distance of x. Now let us find mxx that is the movement about the sections. Here there are two sections. We consider the first section for BC. If it goes beyond 6 meter, we have to consider the second section. I am going to calculate the movements from the point C. In this case, I am moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative, anticlockwise will be positive. RC is acting towards the section in the clockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is x. So minus 1 upon 3 into x. Now let us consider RB. It is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be positive. Now we are taking movement beyond 6 meter. So we have to consider the second section. Here we need this distance. This distance is x minus 6. So 5 upon 6 into x minus 6. Both of these terms should be separated by the dotted lines. Now let us equate mxx with eid square y upon dx square. Now let us integrate on both of the sides. When we integrate eid square y upon dx square, we will get ey dy upon dx. For integrating x, we can apply this formula. For integrating x minus 6, we can apply this formula. Using those formulas, we can integrate them. C1 is the constant. 3 into 2, we will get 6. 6 into 2, we will get 12. Now, let us integrate this on both of the sides. When we integrate ei dy upon dx, we will get eiy. Using the formulas, we can integrate these two terms. C2 is the new constant. 6 into 3, we will get 18. 12 into 3, we will get 36. In the point C, there is a vertical support. If there is vertical support, there will be no deflection. So, when x is 0, y will be 0. Using that condition, we can calculate C2. But, we have to be very careful. When we apply these two values, we should not consider this part. Because this part is only applicable beyond 6 meter. But, we are making the conditions in the point C. In this case, we should not consider this part. We only consider this. In the point B also, there is a vertical support. In this case, there will be no deflection. So, when x is 6, y will be 0. When we apply x is equal to 6, y is equal to 0 and c2 is equal to 0. In this equation, we will get this equation. From this equation, we can calculate C1. Finally, we have calculated C1 and C2. Let us apply the value of C1 in this equation which we have already formed. We know that dy upon dx is the slope. We have to find the slope in the point D that is theta dc. In the point D, the value of x is 6 plus 2, 8. So, instead of x, we have to apply 8. After the calculations, we are getting theta dc. In this equation also, let us apply the values of c1 and c2. Finally, we have formed an equation for y dx. Then, we have to find yd, the deflection in the point d. 
we know that in the point D, x is 8. So, instead of x, let us apply 8. After applying 8, we are getting yd. Now, let us take ad1. Here, there is only one part. So, only one section is enough. We have to make the section from the point D1 at the distance of x. Now, let us calculate Mxx, that is the movement in the section x. The reaction 0.5 is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is x. Then, we have a movement which is acting in the clockwise direction. So, it will be negative. Now, let us equate mxx with eid square y upon dx square. Then, let us do the integration. c1 is the constant. Let us make the integration again. c2 is the new constant. In the point d, we have calculated the deflection y. Here, the point d is located when x is 0. So, we can apply the condition when x is 0, y will be minus 34 upon 3 ei. When we apply these two values in this equation, we can get c2. In the point A, there is a vertical support. If there is a vertical support, there will be no deflection. So, when x is 2, y will be 0. Let us apply x is 2, y is 0, c2 is minus 34 upon 3. In this equation, when we do that, we are getting c1. Let us apply the value of c1 in this equation. Here, we have to find theta dA. In the point D, the value of x is 0. So, instead of x, we have to apply 0. After applying 0, we are getting theta dA. In this equation, let us apply the values of c1 and c2 so that we will get y dx. We have seen the formula for theta dd, theta dc minus theta dA. We have calculated both of them. Let us apply the values. Finally, for theta dd, we are getting minus 40 upon 3 ei. We know the formula to calculate the ordinate for md, y dx upon theta dd. For the portion cd and for the portion da, we have formed y dx. Let us apply. Then we can eliminate ei. Then let us take minus 40 upon 3 inversely and then multiply. Finally, we have made the equations for the ordinates of md. Now, let us make the table and calculate the ordinates. From the point C and up to the point D, we have to use this formula. From the point D up to the point A, we have to use this formula. When we apply this formula, we have to be very careful. Up to the point B, we should not consider this term. Only we have to consider these two terms. So, from the point 0 to the point 6, we have to apply the values only inside of these. Then, for B to D, we have to consider the whole formula. So, to calculate the ordinates, for 7 meter and 8 meter, we have to consider the whole formula. From the point D to the point A, we have to consider this formula. Instead of x, we have to apply 1 and then 2, so that we will get these two values. Now, using the ordinates, we can make the influence line diagram. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.